Hey guys, welcome to Coffee with Mirko, another episode of our series where we talk to coffee professionals uh, from all over the world uh, and uh, get a good understanding of different parts of their business, their passion, and basically we're able to ask questions. Uh, today we're talking to BW uh, from A Coffee in Melbourne, so just stay tuned until until he, he joins with a coffee handle and uh, we'll be able to ask him lots of questions around his business, around his roasting skills and whatever guys you want to know. So um, he's definitely one of the pioneers of a certain style of coffee and roasting and techniques and brewing. So definitely worth to hang out. Um, if you just tuned in, uh, please just... Uh, know that these episodes will also be posted on YouTube and on our podcast and I'd love for you to reshare uh, your favorite episode, reshare a screenshot of uh, our live streams and just tell friends and family. Uh, the more people that we can reach, uh, the more we can uh, keep going with these uh, shows and episodes. So hopefully we'll get to Hey Uberlandio, Tarek, big shout out to Tarek. Big shout out to Asma and everyone who's tuning in. Uh, Pez Gallo Coffee, good to see you all. Joker Coffee, hey guys. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure um, how familiar BW is with live stream on Instagram, so we'll wait for him. Uh, I might check on my laptop um, on his emails if um, if we actually if I actually can reach him on a mobile phone, but. I'm not sure if uh, I'm just gonna check this out. Um, we'll have a look. Um, yeah, there is a phone number too, so I should have contacted him maybe there. But we'll we'll see how we go. Um, in the meantime, we'll wait, and uh, that's all we can do. O que você acha dos cafés brasileiros? Okay, uh, voice Sasha dos cafés brasileiros. I'm not sure what that means. I'm assuming what voice something something to coffees from Brazil, Brazilian coffees. All about weddings. Seven joined. Good to see you. We're just waiting on the guest. Um, hopefully, he tunes in very soon, and uh, we'll be able to um, we'll be able to get started with the show and the interview. Royal Cafe, good to see you. Um, so these episodes, if we today I think it's episode 32. Um, so yeah, we're just waiting for him. He just sent me an email, uh, he's logging in. So uh, I believe he's gonna log in from his shop. So it'll be pretty interesting for you guys to see also his shop. So I'm gonna pin in the comments. Hey, Ali Reza, good to see you, my man. Really good to see you, how you doing? Tell us how you're doing. Talking with BW from a coffee uh, Q&A. Royal Cafe, how you doing? And BW is in the house, so we'll bring him in as soon as we can. We'll send him an invite right now. Let's see if we can do that. Unable to join. Okay. Uh, BW, uh, I believe that maybe you need to update the app because uh, at the moment I see you online, but we can't actually get you to join. Um, it's, uh, let me have a look. Yeah. It, the last time that this happened, the other person didn't have Instagram updated. So maybe you want to go on to your uh, app store or your Google Play and um, just update the app. Um, and then you'll be able to tune in because um, that happened with, who was it? Um, Tim, Tim Wendelbo, I think his app wasn't updated or something. So if you can do that, it'll be fantastic. Um, in the meantime, until we sort this out, a uh, big shout out to, hey, Teen Man, Big Ben. Ben, what's good, my friend? That's, you're sitting right next to me, my friend. And drinking your Tasmanian, uh, Tasmanian, Tanzanian coffee. Uh, Nico DM, big shout out. Lyndon Real, 
Pugsley, Shama, uh, Ali Rez says, it's good to see you again, man. Yeah, likewise, man. It's been uh, two days that I haven't been on the show. Uh, it's been a good couple of days off. I've been organizing things in the, in the behind the scenes. I got to go to the city as well, which was really nice to uh, see a few friends. One of them was Ben. And, um, and we got a big week coming up and today's a double episode. So you get double treat um, now. And in six hours, we go Mark Dundon. Uh, but yeah, it will be, it'll be pretty good. Um, Pescalio, uh, any plans to visit Los Cabos? Uh, what's Los Cabos? Tell me more about it. And Barista Hamed, hello to you. I hope you're well. I hope you're safe. I hope all of you will get safe. Uh, great lineup, Ben says. And uh, Paradox Coffee Ross is joining us. Good to see you. Um, whoever is looking from that account. And then we go Mirzali. Um, so we're waiting on BW. Um, he's the owner and founder of uh, A Coffee Melbourne. And basically, He's updating his app because at the moment he wasn't able to join through the live and usually it's when the app is not updated. Uh, a little technicality. Rwanda Deluxe Coffee saying hello. He's in the house. Mirzali Cafe Buongiorno. Good to see you all. Hope you're well. Hope you're safe. Um, so yeah, BW, uh, his name is actually not BW, but I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll find out more about him soon and... Uh, we got a whole list of questions, but right now I'm just uh, waiting. It's a waiting game. Hawks Cafe, good to see you. Hawks Cafe in the building. And yeah, so if you're enjoying this, you can check out previous episodes. They're on my YouTube. They're also on a podcast if you prefer listening to it. Uh, today's episode 32, so we had a lot of people on Mui Cafe. Um, and we also just... Yeah, keep smashing these episodes. So if you if you enjoy them, just take a screenshot, um, reshare it, retweet it, put it on Facebook, um, put it wherever you want. Um, Ali Reza, um, I'm in Melbourne, so it's Australian Eastern Standard Time. So it's 10.07 in the morning. TW Coffee Speciality, good to see you. Fanny Favex, here is 4.30. Where do you live, Ali Reza? And 4.30 a.m. or p.m.? Because if it's a.m., that's a big commitment. Friend Sanity, Oka Siboro. Hey, guys. Hope you're well. Hope you're safe. We're just waiting on BW to get back into the chat with his uh, account. Uh, let me see if he sent any emails to me, maybe. Oh, here it is. Let's have a look. It should work now. Uh, 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 uh. Here we go. Hello. Hey, BW here. How are you, brother? I'm good, good. How are you? I'm fantastic. Uh, it's good to see you. Good to meet good you. To good to very, see very you. Nice meeting you. Man, I need to step up my game. I love your style. <laughs> look at that jacket. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, look, before we start, um, let me just ask you, how's you, your family, your team doing with the pandemic? Are you guys safe? You know, health-wise, you good? Uh, we are, we're doing okay. So um, at the moment, like, you know, we are only doing takeaways. Uh, you know, my family is uh, good, by the way. Um, so, uh, so this is, um, I'm at the, um, at the showroom at the moment. So this nice. is, um, you know, what's happening right now. Um, Very nice. You know, the takeaways <laughs> and uh, yeah. Um, I can actually show you around a little bit. So, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, here is here is where the magic happens. Yeah, this is the way I'm. What's happening right now? So, and this is a uh, yeah. right in the heart of Collingwood. Right. So we got a, you know, P12 coffee roast over here. Yeah, most of the production roast term um, happens over here, and uh, you know, a little sample roaster. Right sample now, roaster. We, yeah, we still a bit of a green beans. Beautiful. Here, and I saw, I saw Caleb. Uh, Caleb was roasting there. 
uh, the other day. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. So um, Caleb um, is doing a you know um, coffee. Uh, we did the coffee roasting class. That's yeah. more like you know. So Caleb wants to extend his um, you know, yeah, do yeah. Some little bit more development um, on roasting. So um, that's what we did together for the last um, uh, couple of days. He's coming back uh, next week as well. So one day. Fantastic. Yeah. Yep. No, he's a he's a good friend. Um, but look. To get things started, um, could you please tell us a little bit, people who, you know, for the people who haven't seen you or met you yet, um, how did you start your coffee journey and your coffee career? Ooh, so um, it's um, so it started uh, as a part-time job. I guess a lot of um, coffee professionals have started like that. So um, it, it's a 2005. So um, I started um, working as a barista. So um, um, in, in Starbucks in Korea. So that's uh, my first contact um, uh, in coffee. So um, 2006, I come to Australia. So I, uh, you know, I also get a part-time job as a barista. Um, I wasn't really that serious at the time, but um, uh, I didn't even know coffee being, uh, has to be roasted before it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, before it's grinded. So I didn't even know, but uh, um, <clears throat> So I like you know I'm working as a like you know I'm as a barista and uh, one day I uh, step into Saint Ali Coffee Roasters in South Melbourne. Um, it's, it's uh, like 2007 something like that. So uh, it's, uh, at that time also like uh, it's only the place uh, we can call it specialty coffee. So at the time just uh, like you know, not nothing in Australia, but uh, you know um, yeah, and um, I um. I saw, you know, coffee roasters moving and the baristas, uh, you know, making coffee very, um, you know, very, in a very professional way. So I was very um, um, impressed at the time. So like, you no, know, uh, okay, this is the place I wanted to, you know, work. And um, I know I started working there and I got in, and uh, I, um, I, I, you know, I was, you know, I really got into it. I become very serious and I wanted to learn more and more and I'm, I'm you know, uh, so that's um, that's a, like more like no, I take it as a series, you know, 2007 or something like that. And then I worked there as a barista, like training coffee roaster. Um, I was like you know, I was doing doing some deliveries and uh, like you know, looking after the wholesale customers. And then I pretty much do like you know, a lot of things over there. Yeah. And um, uh, after a few years, and I moved to uh, Market Lane Coffee. So um, I started working as a coffee roaster uh, for about five years over there. And uh, it was a really, really um, valuable time for me as a, you know, um, uh, grow as a coffee roaster. So, um, you know, it's uh, like, you no, know, I really like the, um, you know, philosophy they have. And uh, like the Dutch, um, at the time, there's only, only like, you know, this um, sourcing their green coffee, the selection and the roasting their own coffee. And they're very focused on the, um, you know, it's a, uh, uh, in Australia, as you know, like it's more like you know, um, food and the coffee comes together. But I'm like that's the only place that you know uh, dealing with the coffee or anything. So, um, and, uh, <clears throat> so in Asia, there's a lot of you know places like that. But in Australia, it's very at the time it was really rare. And um, yeah, so I work as a, like a coffee roaster over there for five years, and um, um, and then I started a coffee. So um, after yeah. first contact, after 10 years later, so this is what comes up. So like uh, what, you know, I always wanted to do something uh, on my own, you know. I believe a lot of, you know, baristas, coffee pro professionals, um, you know, wanted to be like that. So Yeah, yeah. wow. And uh, at the time with Senali, was there still when Mark, Mark Dandan was there? No, I think um, uh, the uh, Salvatore just took it just, over. Just, that, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, I just get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. funny because um, yeah, tomorrow uh, this afternoon we got Mark down then, and uh, on Tuesday we got mm. Salvatore. So right, it's gonna right. be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then yeah, yeah. I mean, and then you won the twenty fourteen uh, cup tasting. Uh, yes. How how defining was that moment for your coffee path and coffee career? Oh no! Just um, um, I did a bit of a like you know. Uh, once I got into the in the coffee, I did a bit of a competitions and I did a barista you know championship. Um, 
and um, you know, cupcakes. In a big, once I become the roster, I um, is um, I focus them on a little bit more like the cup tasting. So I um, I just you know, just uh, like I just did it like you know, um, because every year like um, you know, uh, but um, you know, I think I just got lucky in 2014, and um, I just got one. So um, I you know, I went to uh, World Cup Tasting Championship. You know, it was a uh, yeah, it was a good time. I came fifth in the world. And um, yeah, it was uh, like, you know, it was, uh, it was a happy time, like, you know, something that I worked hard, you know, like, you know, but, you know, something that I can actually visualize something that, you know, uh, my efforts, you know, but um, I think, um, I think most of the time is that, uh, you know, when you do um, competition, you know, I think you need to be, <laughs> sometimes you get just lucky and then it happens, you know. I think, I, I think you're very humble and I think you're very modest. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, of course, there's always a luck element in many things, but uh, I believe that, you know, to reach the fifth spot in the world in 2013, it's still a big effort. So congratulations. I mean, don't underestimate that. But <laughs> no, I, I, I appreciate much. you being humble. Yeah. I think it's uh, it's better that way instead of, you know, showing yeah. people your trophies. I, I, mm -hmm. I respect it. And then you also coach various champions like Caleb Harry. Um, do, do you love the process of teaching and uh you know, from there, we had lots of champions coming from your country. Uh, does that make you proud that somehow you, uh, Ompo, Caleb, Harry, Ir Irvine, you know, like yeah. you guys kind of started a movement for South Korea? Obviously. Yeah. So I think um, it happens like, um, uh, no, I think it, it, it's really, it's actually really good because they're like, um, uh, when I um so when I won in the 2014 uh, Australian Cup Asian Championship, like um, there was a bit of like you know Korean barista community that you know they they're very passionate. So I think Harry wanted to do um you know um so what I did like you know, he wanted to do the Cup Asian Championship. So like uh, at the time there was um I was a bit of um course available. I was like in the free like you know, because of my you know. In the uh, at the time, I was the in the process of uh, like setting up the A coffee, so I was uh, like, you know, um, and it was tough time at the time, you know, so but um, I was a little bit of um, uh, free, so like, you know, uh, you know, I, I would help you out. So, like, this uh, we spent a lot of time together, um, and um, you know, I didn't there was um, Harry's um, it's a first competition ever, and then uh, he won, and I'm uh, like, oh, really, like, and I was uh, you know, he he, he worked very hard. You know, like you know, because um, you know, that also made me to um help him as well. So I did what I can do, and uh, like you no, know, I think the rest of the um things in here, you know, that's his um efforts. So um, and then I after after you know after he won it, like oh, you know, why don't we just like you know, there's a bunch of people, you know, they wanted to do it. So like do do uh, the same thing that we did. So like uh, why don't we just um help them out? So. I think after I know I was like sort of um, uh, I, I was serious, but I'm like next five years, why don't we, the um, uh, you know, why don't we make the the you know, Korean baristas you know, um, we have, you know, in the competition. So next five years, I think um, all the Koreans have won the um, uh, cup tasting championship since um, since me. So I think that's uh, something that you know, oh okay, you know. It, it work, you know. It's it's working. Like what we, you know, what we do is not, you know, it's something that uh, people can, uh, you know, appreciate. It. I don't. Uh, yeah, so like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what we did. And then Caleb, like you know, there's a, uh, you know, I I knew Caleb uh, for a long time, and I am, um, you know, I knew that, you know, he's um he's capable, and then he, you know. He went to the world and won the you know world championship and uh, yeah I think that um, whole thing is uh, like you know um, um make the um, whole community it's bigger so we all 100%. yeah stand um, stand out rather than just being me like you know I'm um, you know you know I think in you know, maybe next few years like you no know, people uh, won't remember but you know maybe the whole thing is it becomes a little bit bigger so like uh, and uh, that's also good for me as well for sure yeah, for I sure I think. I think it's, you know, we, you know, I talked with uh, Mika or Justin, you know, it's not about you, but it's about you representing your country and what you did. And, you know, then people start looking up because, 
you know, newspaper start talking about you or a magazine. Yeah. So people start looking at coffee and barista as a career and it changed the perspective. Like I'm from Italy, um, you know, and last year, obviously, uh, winning the, the World Latte Art Championship, um, you know, and the, you know, other roasters like Francesco Sanapo with Dita Artigianale or Gardelli Coffee Roasters. I think I was talking to them actually a couple of weeks ago, both of them, and, uh, you know, you, you are one of those characters and those people that will influence your country where, you know, you, you know how it is. Like, we come to Melbourne now and it's like, oh, coffee, 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 but... In some countries, that's not the case yet. So I think that you almost started a movement with everybody else's collectively. So I really appreciate it, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And um, can you sort of tell us more? I'm interested. Well, Harry is saying hello, and Harry is actually going to be here on Monday as well for an interview. So <laughs> it's a small world. Um, and I'm very interested in the why. Why is a beautiful question, in my opinion. Can you tell us more about why you created and started a coffee? Oh, I think, um, um, you know, just, I think a lot of, um, a lot of the coffee professionals that I think they wanted to do something, uh, they wanted to do something own, maybe just in the future or something like that. I think, I think I was the same, but I, Sorry, there was a lack of someone. Someone called you. Know, just, that's good. That's good. Um, yeah, um, I didn't. Um, so, like, the, once I started, I think it's um, doing your own thing. Is um, it's actually really tough than what I thought. Like, just you know, just time consuming the energy. Like, you you wanted to do something. Uh, you know, what you want. You know, you're always thinking about that. So, like, you wanted to do it in the same way that you wanted to do it. So I think um, keeping also the um, uh, being consistently, like, you know, you're consistent, consistently doing it. It's, it is, it's different side. You, know, you, can, you can do things once or twice, really, you know, good job, but keeping it, keeping it I think it's a different thing. So like, you know, mm -hmm. um, actually it's very, you know, different thing. But um, what I, why I wanted to do this, like, you know, I think this is more like, um, I think um, expression of like me, what I think, you know, what I am, my perspective. I think this is more like, you know, um, I try to, you know, um, express, you know, what I, uh, my perspective, what I think. And your values. Know, about the copy, yes. That's what yes. I think that's, uh, that's most, you know, that's more like um, and the main reason that I, you know, do the, um, the whole thing. I guess. Yeah. I appreciate. It. I think. Um, I think it's really. But I, I, a little bit of background for you and I never met in person. But I, I worked in coffee for about nine years, and uh, after two years working for Tobias Estate, I quit quit my job last year and I started my own my own company. So I, I can relate to what you said. Uh, I started seriously, maybe October November last year, and there is nobody telling you what to do, how to do it, how to keep consistent, or right, wake yeah. you up in the morning with a phone call. Mm -hmm. It's like. I get it. And because I worked for a wholesale business like yours, like mm -hmm. as a roaster, I understand the difficulties and challenges for sure. And we can, we can talk about it later, but what, what I love about you and, and a coffee is actually something that I go by too. So I'm, um, I'm pretty much a 90% of a minimalist in my private life. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I really can relate with your space. Uh, what were people thinking when you first opened such a, minimalistic space and how important it is to the concept of less is more i think the uh, the um the concept itself is more uh it came from the it's more like a focus to me it's more like you know um I, so we try to eliminate all things that we don't need it's like you know some certain decorations and things like that so like you know um and the plants, uh, like, you know, uh, pictures, uh, like picture frame, things like that. Um, that's not, I try to um, eliminate it. So like, uh, you know, this is more like what, why, what I need, you know, it's like, you know, um, I don't need those small things and things like that. So like, uh, you know, just take it off. I think it is, um, I'm trying to uh, ex present the focus. So we are focusing on this, 
which is like in a coffin. So like, you know, um, I think I'll um, put this way. If you think about the, you know, there is a canvas, white canvas. If there is um, the small dot in the middle, only thing you can see, that's the, that's the, that's the dot. And I think there's a more like, you know, um, you know, there's a focus to, you know, what the, uh, the value is. And that's what I wanted to um, present. So um, this is, uh, you know, um, I was really a uh, little bit worried. There's a lot of help with them you know, um, uh, from the, um, the other side of the team, like you know, Frankie and Nick from the bench project. And um, we just do it together, like you know, um, the whole arrangement and things like that. And um, at, at some point, I was really worried. It's like, it feels like you know, it's, uh, it's just really empty. And like, I don't know, I wanted to give them, you know, it's still like, you know, we, I also still wanted to give, um, you know, introduce our product in a friend, friendly way. This can be a little bit more, you know, you know what I mean? Just to like, you know, just, I so, think, um, yeah, I, yeah, I understand. I think it can be confronting for some people, like, you know, yeah. the thought of it, but the, it's well balanced by the way that you guys present yourselves. Like, yeah. if you were the type of guy that also, you know, are very loud in your fashion or, you know, you're not minimalist, you know, the way that you carry yourself, then that will be too much of a contrast. But mm -hmm. then people start to get it. It's like, oh, okay. And you're so right. You know, people ask me when they come to my place, oh, why don't you have this? Why don't you have that? And the answer is because I don't need it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're passionate yeah. about mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. you can have, you know, three, four, five, six grinders or yeah. one, two, three, four, five different ways to make yeah. coffee at home. You know, it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I, read a, I read a book about minimalism. Um, sorry, I watched a documentary about minimalism. But, uh, these guys were talking about, you know, if you're passionate about books, it's okay to have a library at home with a thousand books. Mm -hmm. It's fine. It's what you are and who you are. In your case, you're representing coffee and you want people to focus on what's in the cup absorb the cup, absorb the coffee, and enjoy the overall experience. I think it's beautiful, for sure. Thank you. Being yourself and true to your values, mm -hmm. combining that, you can sleep at night very easily. If instead your shop was very loud and colorful and not the way that you like to be in your private life as well, you wouldn't sleep well at night. You're like, yeah. nah, it's not for me. But that's okay. I really appreciate that. And it's working. And as far as that, like, this is the style, but what's your actual uh, overall mission uh, with a coffee? Uh, so um, I think it's, um, I think what, what we do is very simple. So like, you know, we still like to the coffee, we think it's good. And as I said, like, you know, bring more interest to the people. And then we roasting them in a very careful way. Like, you know, this is like, you know, um, the, there's a, some value that um, in coffee, we really take it out, um, such as like you know, clarity of a transparency. I normally say like transparency, like you know, I wanted to take um, what the uh, potential um, that you know, green coffee has. So that's more like, it doesn't really matter like, you know, is it coffee is good or not, you know, but you know, I wanted to take the, out the true value. But I think this is uh, more like if we didn't, uh, true value is not really good. It's, uh, that's wrong with our selection process. So like we just um, but in the roasting in the in the roasting side, we just wanted to take out the true value of the um, you know potential of the, what the green coffee has, and that should introduce uh, showcasing to the people. So bring them more interest from the public, and that's uh, that's uh, that's the, um, you know that's what we do. I think um, uh, there's a like you know um, in the coffee industry is very competitive at the moment. So um, it's not about you know I also understand it's not about you know you know. Product quality has to be just like you, you can't really make an excuse. It just has to be good. But I mean, the also important thing is that um, I should be happy. I should be very confident uh, with my product. And our team also has very confidence, in, like you know, um, on our, you know, with our product. So we can um, showcasing um, you know, our passion, you know, what we do, and uh, like you know, um, through um, our products. And that's what that's what we do here, right? you know. Um, I love yeah. it. I love it. it, it it's, yeah. it's simple and to the point. And mm -hmm. I think that what I've noticed after a long time in hospitality for me is that when I used to consult uh, with, my, with my job, you know, I, always, I used 
I used to say always the same. I say, just do one thing, but perfect. You know, focus on one thing rather than try to do 10 different things, you know, like master, you know, your coffee. Okay. Roasting and making the coffee, but don't do, you know, the whole, you know, steak night or parma night or, uh, uh, you know, the alcohol. Like it, it can become a little bit confusing and your identity gets a bit lost. Uh, so I think that your identity is very clear as far as a coffee goes, which I really appreciate. Um, now, because we reached the half mark uh, of the interview, I usually have an out, out of the box question uh, for all the guests. Um, if you could choose, who would you like to have dinner with? Um, I beg your pardon? Who would you like to have a dinner with? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Uh, um, uh, that's a very <laughs> random question. Um, I know. <laughs> yeah, I think I wanted to have um, dinner with um, if um, if I have a, like no um, unlimited options. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Warren Buffett. Cool. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I like it. I love this question. <laughs> yeah. You know why I like this question? Because because now from now until you go yeah. back home you can actually think, oh, you know what, well, actually, I would actually have choose maybe someone else as well, you know? It's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I like this question. Um, yeah. Now, on top of a coffee in Collingwood, there's also, uh, you know, you're also part of other shops of yours um, with your partnerships and all. Can you tell us a bit more about the concept behind that, you know, Bench Slater, you know, like surrounding a coffee, you also have these little other shops um, so like you no, know, um, we supply to the um, our you know there's a bit of a partnership with them um, you know a exactly. project and uh, like you know, we supply to the um, our products to the uh, little rogue in the city and uh, like Chamber Coffee Bros and uh, um, three bags full like you know on, on filter bar things like that. Um, I think they um, just you know um, I, I really like the uh, the concept that you know they have you know I really value. Um, that you know, what what they do over there, just so they are very focused. You know, they know what to do. Like they know how to do it. Like you know, they you know just um, you know, they just are, like a very nice people as well to work with. So um, I think they um, so so um, I met um, Frank and Nick behind the, the bench project. Like um, so I started I started a coffee and they liked. You know, I liked what they do, and I like they liked um, um, our, you know, our, our products. So, like, sort of like, you know, oh, why don't we just work together and things like that? So that's how our um, friendship, you know, has started. Yeah. And like, you know, they is still using our, like, you know, um, our product, you know, in, uh, at their shops and things, you know. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, they represent our, you know, products really nice, and um, so. Uh, I really appreciate it, and um, I, um, you know, it's uh, also Leo from the, um, you know, Shambu Coffee Bros and Little Rock. Um, you know, just, um, you know, just uh, like I just have to thank them, you know, just, um, just represent our product. So, you know, in a way that, you know, I wanted to represent. So it's sometimes a little bit difficult to so sort of like, you know, um, it's, uh, it's once um, it left our hands. You know, so sometimes you sort of lose your control. You know, like you sometimes get frustrated because, uh, okay, this is not the way that, uh, uh, you know, my product, you know, um, represented. So, but, um, you know, um, I feel lucky that, you know, they just, you know, you know I have a you know, partnership with them. You know, some good people, a bunch of good people. So, yeah. 100%. In fact, my, my next question or my next statement yeah. was like, mm -hmm. It seems like behind, you know, a coffee, you know, there's a big supporting network. It almost feels like a family, you know, like exactly. I'm thinking about the crew of Little Rogue and Shambo, you know. Yeah. I've, I've been going to Little Rogue for years and uh, Leo, MJ and all the guys yeah. there, Jordan, you know, even the previous yeah. people, you know, like they all have had such a beautiful representation of your products. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think like you just said, it's mm. super important to have the right people around you. Uh, and in terms of what you just touched base on, you want to make sure the product takes a certain way because you've made it. Um, mm -hmm. We faced those challenges when I was working at Toby's Estate because, you know, we roast, we, well, they roast nationally. So 
the roaster has a particular idea on how the coffee should taste, but as we know, coffee has so many variables, water, equipment, uh, the, the person who makes it uh, plays such relevant roles. So do you, do you have yet a system where you actually have a person who can go around these shops to sort of do a quality control or yeah. quality assurance? Yeah. Do you do that? Yeah, that's, uh, that's me. So, so like, you know, um, every Wednesday, that's our delivery day. So like we deliver the um, um, uh, our coffee to the um, wholesale accounts and uh, that's, um, and I'm the delivery guy as well. So I, um, I meet them and uh, at, the, at the site. So like, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, taste the coffee, like, you know, what do you think, what's your feedback? So like, you know, I think it's a bit, you know, just, uh, um, you know, I give them a recommendation. Why don't you try this and like things like that. So, um, uh, so we have a very close, um, you know, relationship. So, which is, um, which, which helps as well. And that they respect um, um, the way we, you know, um, the way we want it to present as well. So, which is very important. So like, no, I'm, I am, um, you know, I feel lucky that, you know, we have, I have people um, around us and things like that. So, yeah. 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 100%, I mm -hmm. think, um, especially for, for a roaster, what I, what I feel and notice is that it's always a fine balance between scaling the business and preserving quality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's going back, less is more, which is the whole concept of minimalism. Yeah. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. The less accounts you have, the less people that you work with with your coffee, the more uh, you know you are able to see and uh, you know make sure that the coffee is done a certain way. But yep. if you have actually a lot of quantity of people using your coffee, it becomes a little bit tricky for you. So yep. I understand. Um, so yep. you're a roaster, you're a barista, you cup taster, brewer. Um, what would you say overall is your actual most loved passion? Oh, right. I think um, I think I can't really, I can't really like in a, you know take that apart. I think it's just more like you know. So when I working as a barista, um, I did you know quite a long time, um, and um, I I was really frustrated because um, you know there's not much I can really control. So that's um, that's that's why I wanted to learn a little bit, you know, more about you know roasting, and I wanted to uh, wanted to know more the green coffee. I think it's um, it's coffee is a very difficult thing, you know, um, uh, because of why I think is uh, because um, there's a lot of hands in the chain. It's not, you know, um, uh, say um, if you're a winemaker, so you grow, grow, you know, grow grapes, and uh, like you know, you, you know, until the finish. So, you, you know, you control it. So, like, you know, um, you, you're bottling and things like that. So, you know, but the coffee is a little bit different. There's farmers and the roasters and the baristas. So, like, different hands and, like, every single step so that is going into the, you know, think of that. That makes, uh, that makes um, you know, uh, you know, make a, you know, one cup of great cup. One cup of great cup. So, like, you know, one copy of great, you know. That's uh, you know I think that's why it's a uh, very difficult. So like in the communication is a very important. So um, so I wanted to control as much as uh, I can. So the, you know the, so that's what we do over here. So we select and we roast and we make a copy over here. So like at least we in our space. So um, we present uh, the coffee and uh, that the way that we wanted to um, showcase. So um. I can't, I really enjoy the, um, I like it. I like the process. I like all the process. I think more like selection processes is fun to me, discovering the, uh, you know, different types of coffee. And uh, these days, a lot of um, like, you know, different processing methods and the people, you know, experiment and uh, um, which is, uh, you know, very, you know, exciting and, uh, you know, interesting as well. So that's more like, um, I enjoy it, but um, I think I hold, Whole thing, the whole like, process. Uh, yeah, the whole it's process cool. is just have to, you know, I think because it's uh, linked and you know, roasting affects the how, you know, how it's extracted and you know, your selection and you know, how it's uh, like, you know, um, to the final cup, you know, how it's, you know, it's going to be. So, um, and you, you know, it yeah. seems like, it seems to me that you also like to be present within each process as much as you can. Obviously, you mm -hmm. can't pick the cherries, but you really, yeah. Yeah. 
are giving me the impression that you like the process, but also be present in each step uh, rather than just doing one thing, which is okay because you wouldn't have the control. You know, if you're just a barista, you're not controlling the roasting process. I get you. Makes sense. It really makes sense. And it also makes sense that you are a roaster in the shop because every step and, you know, from the entrance of a coffee to the bottom of the shop, most steps are within the shop, which it, it makes complete sense. Yeah. Um, now, um, as far as, uh, you know, roasting goes, what's your next plan? You know, what's a, what's a plan? What, you know, are you planning on doing anything in particular in terms of, you know, you just talk about processing. Are you looking at different experiments? So in terms of, uh, in terms of roasting process, I think, um, I'm not doing really anything special. I think it's, uh, it's uh, at the moment, like, uh, it's, like it makes me busy enough. Like, it's a very tough job. So every, we're dealing with them uh, normally, like eight to 10 different types of coffee, a different country, different process method. And, uh, and uh, it's, uh, with the volume we do at the moment, it's very tough. Like, you know, um, uh, so we, as I said, like, you know, I wanted to do, present to like, you know, um, the best of the best of the like you know the potential of the green coffee has and that's pretty much it i'm not in roasting wise i'm not doing anything you know i also i don't believe i don't believe if i do i think it has to be done in a you know you know at the farm level you know mm -hmm. processing method and things like that but um, there's not much i think i believe um my also um capability at, at um at the stage of roasting it's not really not that much. So like, you know, I'm, I'm just trying, uh, you know, our best. This is like, you know, uh, bring the clarity, transparency um, of the coffee. And that's, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And that's also our philosophy as well, so. Yeah, which I, which I love. And something that I find quite distinctive, actually, of, um, you know, going back on the, you know, the concept and the idea behind a coffee is, um, I remember once I walked in, uh, I think it was a couple of years ago, or a year and a half, and I was still working with Tobias Estate, which is okay, you know. And um, I was working with one of my one of my good friends, and uh, the first thing that we noticed was your uh, retail shelf, because at the time we were really putting focus on retail coffee. And, uh, and we noticed that your coffee, you know, you just started the box, you know, like the coffee was inside a box. And we were blew away. We were blown away. We're like, Fuck! This is great. Like, like it, it, it was so simple but so effective visually. Like, do you have someone in your team that works on product design like that, or do you do it yourself, or you know what? What's what was the idea behind it, or you know? um, at this um, stage, uh, like I wanted to have uh, someone dedicated to. Um, the product design, you know, things like that. But um, I think uh, we are not that uh, we are not that level yet. I wish I could have someone to do it. So I think a lot of uh, you know um, things in uh, product is you know in design wise and things like that. And uh, uh, um, I involved um, like ninety percent. So wow. we, we do like you no, know, we, uh, we I guess I'm very you know, technically um, you know dealing with the, like you know, you know illustrator and you know, design programs and things like that. But uh, yeah, we. At the moment, like, you know, uh, yeah, we do pretty much everything, yeah, ourselves, yeah. That's incredible. Like, yeah, I, I still remember, you know, and mm -hmm. I never seen it, and it was mm -hmm. super cool. So mm -hmm. I really like that. So <laughs> thank you very much. 100%, 100%. Um, okay. I think it's because in coffee, it's very easy to get caught up into. Mm -hmm. We all have seen, you know, it's all about innovation, but innovation becomes difficult sometimes. Yeah. We think too hard. But sometimes bring it back to simple simplicity can actually be more effective. Yeah. And, you know, I thought we thought it was such a cool idea. But anyway, um, I'm glad of it. And uh, as far as the overall industry, you know, with COVID-19, um, also where the coffee market was going before the virus, supply demand and pricing, what would you like to see in the future of coffee? You know, what would you, what's something that you like to see? Uh, I don't, I don't, because I might um, get to that, you know, question a lot of times, but I, I don't, I don't know. Like, I mean, like, no, I think I'm more like, I don't really have something that, you know, um, because I, I'm, I always think that I wanted to do best um, 
do my best on the dice. So this is what mm -hmm. I, you know, I think it's going, it's going to happen. Like, and I'm just, um, you know, I just so like, you know, more like, you know, um, we have, um, uh, we wanted to do more like environmental friendly packaging. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think that's, uh, that's actually happening in the industry. So which is a really, really good. Um, and more like, you know, yeah. So like, I think that's more like that's 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 what I that's um, something that we are uh, focused on as well. Just uh, like something you know, better in the better for the environment and uh, like, uh, which is uh, actually cost more. So that's uh, more like you know, obstacle to me. Like you know, we of I have to find the balance. Like you know, just uh, commercially, it's uh, and have to make it work, but also the environment friendly things like that. So um, you know, we are looking you know, working on that one. I think that's something that I wanted to say, but um. Yeah, I think we are doing it in, uh, in, in, in terms of, um, you know, um, the whole thing in the coffee industry in, in Melbourne. Like, you know, um, I think we, we're doing okay. We're doing, we're doing really good. Yeah, yeah. I think to top up your answer, you know, I think that often many issues are solved by individual actions. You know, it's like it's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis rather than waiting for someone to fix the problem. Mm. You know, it's like, well... You know, whatever issue you care about yeah. starts from our own selves to be able to start the change uh, rather than waiting for someone to come up with an invention. Yeah. Um, and I think that you're right. Look, I think probably, and that's something that we're going to talk about with Mark um, at 4 p.m., it's pricing. I think it comes down to pricing. I think that coffee is under, underpriced yeah. um, from, from all the way from farm all the way to the cup. Because like you were talking about wine, I used to trade wine back in Italy. Um, I used to be in the wine industry. And it's funny, like it's quite similar. You know, you got a grape and a cherry uh, that needs to be harvested, processed, created into drink and sold. And it's funny how wine can be sold for 10, 15, $20 for a glass and coffee is sold for four yep. three to one dollars per yep. cup so and it actually costs more to technically the process in terms of labor costs because to open a bottle of wine and pour it i've been a bartender it's quite yeah. simple yeah. but then you have people making you know milk yeah. and running the shots yeah. and all of it so it's quite interesting and uh, yeah. um, d train is having a question saying mm. a ton of grapes only yield about 650 dollar per ton to the grower there you go we go more more technical answers there there you go yeah 100 percent yeah 100 percent i mean there's obviously different countries different prices and yields but yeah it's interesting um so i appreciate your answer um without you um so obviously you got the shopping calling as well in korea um usual my last question to avoid any um you know, uh, abrupt cut because Instagram sharps at 60 minutes. So I want to ask this question right. and then ask you a couple more. But what's next on your planet? What's next for you? Um, so what's happening right now? So we expand, uh, we are expanding our business um, in Korea. So there's uh, <laughs> like the um, um, June uh, who is um, uh, working with me since um, our A Coffee door opened. So he's been working with me over three years and uh, he's now in Korea and uh, like, you know, um, uh, looking for a site. So that's, uh, that's what's happening and that's, uh, you know, we are, um, I'm focusing on next time, um, you know, next few months. So like, you know, we are, uh, we have wanted to have a like, you know, um, present in Korea. So, we, so at the moment we are looking for shop and uh, like we wanted to have like a you know, partnership um, mm. in, uh, in Korea as well. So like, um, like here. Like a here, like you know, like a bench, uh, bench project, and uh, you know, um, shampoo, coffee brewers, and little roll, and things like that. So that's um, yeah, that's something that we are we are looking at next. Makes sense. And um, yeah. just a curiosity, I mean, I, I, I literally don't know this. Uh, maybe I should have prepared myself. But do, do you roast in Korea or you send the coffee from here? No, at the moment we're roasting over here. We send it over. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Would be your plan to eventually roast in Korea? You know, over there as well, or uh, I think I think that would be good, but I'm like, I don't really think that much further. 
because okay. I like you no, know, yeah. So I'm just as I said, like I'm uh, pretty much like you know, I'm doing my best on that you know, today. So like the tomorrow things, I will worry about tomorrow. That's more like uh, how I think, and you know? yeah, I have um, enough to think about today. So yeah, that's cool. Yeah, um, such a good way of living, man. Yeah. Like honestly, I love I love that philosophy. Um, mm. I yeah, I can relate to that a lot because I used to always look too far when I was yeah. younger. I'm still I'm still young, but now I'm learning. It's a day at a time, hundred percent. I love I love what you just said. And um, in terms of you know, people are going to rewatch this because you know it's going to be on the podcast and other platforms. Um, what would you say? Because you know you're quite, you know you your operations at Take Off. It's quite uh, how can I put it? Well structured, as far as I can see, as a coffee professional. Uh, where do you see the most uh, room for improvement for cafes in Melbourne? With your own opinion, I think um, I am. Um, when you ask me about it, what what I wanted to see in the future, like you know, you mentioned the <clears throat> pricing. I think um, yeah, that's, um, I really, really like you know, I uh, I really. Um, I didn't think about it at the time, but I like it. There's something that I wanted, you know, um, we wanted to present that. Like we wanted to, um, we should have, um, there's no value, like you know, enough value to the, um, the final product. I don't, it's like, um, it's very, I think that's uh, something that uh, we are missing as well. So like, and if you say like, this is, uh, this is uh, espresso, and uh, this is like, you know, uh, this is, you know, five or $6. And the people is not gonna have it, you know, happy with it, you know. So like it is very difficult to put the value on this product because it's not a, you know, it just look the same, you know. Doesn't matter like what's in the cup, it just look the same. But I'm like we, you know, how we um, make the um, experience better, and how we make the, um, the you know, that's just there's something something that you know we should do it. So like we can actually um, present showcasing the actual value, so people are happy to pay. You know, five dollars and six dollars for the coffee. You know, I think that's more like you know, fair value to the you know, so we can pay to the um, you know, uh, our stuff a little bit better. Like you know, um, you know, it just uh, becomes a little bit sustain, you know, sustainable. You know, becomes more sustainable. You know, we you know, we we talking about the farmers. We need to pay better and pay better. And, you know, but uh, you know, we gotta make it. We, we gotta make it happen. You know, just like a lot of time. You know. Yeah, and a thousand that. percent. I I always say this to people i think there's a reason why you know nothing happens by chance on a fine dining restaurant yep. it's the overall experience from how the waiter put the napkin on your legs the cutlery that's used the plate yeah. mm. the light everything has a sense and a little bit of thinking behind it um and there's nothing wrong with you know an old fish and chip shop on the street but in terms of charging more, it's the overall experience, and I could not agree more. There's other interviews you can recheck them. I say the same thing all the time. It's, I think it starts with people. I think that for many years, especially now after coronavirus, a lot of people have been away from socializing. So the barista becomes, or the person at the till, the first point of contact in a few weeks. Yep. I think for many years we put a lot of focus in the cup, in the jug. On the machine, we forgot actually to, you know, communicate, and the experience starts from the minute I stepped into the door. Exactly. Hello, how are you? Mm. How's your day been? Yeah. How's your family? Are you safe and sound? Mm. Remembering his or her name, and we've done that. We kind of slipped away from it a little, you know. We kind of forgot that it's a people business, yeah. and then yes, how you present the drink, how you make it. And the overall experience, from the music yeah. to how clean is the place, yeah. the napkins, man, exactly, you yeah. talk my jam, hundred yeah. percent, hundred mm. percent agree, man. Yeah, I like agree. Yeah. Mm. Uh, mm. But um, look, um, Bill, you, thank you so much for coming on. I know you're a busy man, uh, and uh, you know we really feel super grateful for you to joining in, having a good chat, and sharing your experiences and stories. It's super valuable. And I'm super, super grateful for that. Um, I can't wait to hop in into the shop. Hopefully one day that you're in the shop. Uh, you know, you're probably always uh, running around. But uh, I really look forward to meet you in person and have a coffee. And maybe maybe in the future we'll do a live stream 
directly from your shop. We'll do a little tour, maybe yeah. I'm there too, and we'll, we'll drink okay. a cup of yeah. coffee or something. I think that would be cool, yeah. right? yeah. a, little, a little virtual tour. I think that mm. that would be amazing. But if there's anything left that you want to say, if you have any special release coffee or if you have anything that you like, hey, look, actually, I'm just roasting something special, please, uh, the table is yours. Oh, oh I, think, uh, I think we just do uh, like, uh, what we do every day. So like nothing really cool. special uh, at the moment, but I uh, like, you know, we have uh, like, you know, um, so a lot of you know Ethiopian coffee, which I which I uh, which I like, you know, like better than the um, the other you know origin. So you know, it's nothing special, but I mean, you know, just happy days, you know. And, and you 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 ship worldwide at the moment? Uh, yes, we do. Yeah, but um, I think there's a bit of a, like you know uh, logistic uh, issues because of the, you know, this pandemic. So, it takes a bit uh, longer. Yeah. Yeah, it takes a bit longer. It get it gets uh, lost to sometimes, and I like you know, can't really track it back and things like that. But uh, yeah, if it like cool. <laughs> At the moment, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, BW, uh, I wish you your family to stay safe. Um, I look forward to meeting you in person, and uh, thank you so much for joining us, man. Yeah. It was really, really insightful. Very cool, man. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, man. Um, hey guys, um, here we go, two minutes left uh, and then um, the Instagram live stream would have cut off, which I hate. Um, I could have talked to him for another hour very easily. I just uh, value his time too much and I didn't want to take away uh, him from his day-to-day -day routine. Like he said, he does 90% of everything that happens at a coffee and uh, from roasting to delivering to sourcing making coffee, uh, quality control. So I think it was very important to let him go. Uh, I didn't want to hold him too long. Uh, uh, it's been an hour, a very insightful hour. If you enjoyed it, please go and show him some love at a coffee Melbourne underscore Melbourne. Um, and if you enjoyed the show and the episodes, feel free to take a screenshot, reshare it, retweet it send it on Facebook or WhatsApp or your friends and family. We're going to repost this as an IGTV because Instagram doesn't allow me to put it back on the story for some reason. The app is a little bit bugged up. Um, and I want to see you in about five hours. Uh, we have Mark Danden. Uh, Mark Danden is uh, uh, one of the pioneers of Specialty Coffee Melbourne. Uh, he started Ray's Cafe. Uh, he started Seven Seeds. Senali, Brother Babudan, and a lot of other projects. I'm very pumped and excited to see him. BW, amazing. If you missed and you're just tuning in, like you, sacrifice person, I'm fantastic. How you doing? I just finished mine. I hope you can grab a coffee, maybe a filter. And uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in. I really love it. And uh, today's level episode. So I'm not going to stay here and talk for another 10, 15 minutes. Uh, because I'm going to see you all in about five hours at 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Uh, there's actually a story behind where you... I'm going to post one now with a countdown so you can turn on the notification button and you'll be notified by Instagram to say, hey, Coffee Fixation is going live. It's another episode, Coffee with Me. I've got today's episode 32. If you want to check out who's next week on, the second latest post uh, next week, we got Herico. Salvatore Martesa from Centali, and uh, we got uh, whoop, Nolan Nierta from Par Primary, Hugh Kelly from Ona Coffee next week. So, huge lineup as usual. Very pumped, very excited, very humble. Sending you all love. I hope you're super well. Hope you can tune in later, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, leave a comment and reshare it. I really appreciate you guys, each individual of you. So, big shout out to who's still here. Big shout out to Tanti. Hey Tanti, I didn't see you, I was super focused on the live stream. Eva, Oscar, Eugene, Glenn, and the person, and we call Lee, Ike, Kaylee. So big shout out, thank you all for tuning in, and uh, I'll see you in a few hours.